Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel where I'm video documenting my second year of doing a no buy. I make videos about my no buy year itself but also about project panning, a cooking challenge I'm doing and some videos about recycling and upcycling. So if any of that sounds interesting to you then I would love for you to subscribe. For today's video, I have my introduction to my year-long rolling project pan for 2022. This is basically the hashtag team project pan uh, version of the project where you pan a full face of makeup with, um, I guess, some products I've kind of left out either because they're already in other projects or I didn't, I don't know, just didn't want to um, put that particular product in here, but it's more or less a full face of makeup. Last year I did it a little bit differently. I had six categories of um, makeup and I was panning two items from each category. But um, yeah, I just felt like this year I would do it more like the traditional way. Um, so yeah, I will get into the products that I have picked out. Um, I probably won't swatch things on camera. I will just take photos of swatches because I find that sometimes the color doesn't come out um, or it doesn't show up that well in the swatch on the video. Um, it's easier to see like if I take a photo with sort of natural light, um, I think the color is a bit more sort of true a representative of what the product actually looks like. And I will say as well, I am doing like the Mission 100% cruelty free, but I'm not doing it as a standalone project. I'm just trying to prioritize panning non cruelty free stuff. So most of the stuff that you'll see in this video is not cruelty free, um, but I am sort of working towards my collection being um, as cruelty free as possible. Um, so yeah, I think um, I will just get into showing you the products and I will try and more or less go in sort of order of application, but um, there might be a few deviations from that. Um, so the first one I will start out with, oh, and I should say as well, sorry, I've got a million um, and one different little um, like caveats to all of this. Um, some of these items are things that were in my project last year and I didn't finish them and other items are either not necessarily new in the sense that I've never used them but new to a project pan. I haven't had them in a project before um, or they may have been in other projects. And I do have a mix of um, some items are I think pretty close to being finished so I guess it just gives me a bit of momentum at the start of the project and others I think really are going to be like a long haul item. Um, so the first one I have is just an eye primer and this one is from Revolution and it is called their Prime and Lock Primer and you can probably see on there there's a lot of windowing I think I'm about down to here so um, I think I'll actually have to take the stopper out on this one pretty soon so that one um, should be an empty um, within the first couple of months of the project um, so and then the next thing I have um, is also a revival from last year's project it is this acne fighting foundation um, sorry from elf um, and so this one again I think that I'm kind of almost finished with this so this also shouldn't be in the project for too long um, and then the next one I think I think this might actually be the last one that I had in the project last year um, is a concealer and it is from Mecca um, Mecca Max um, and again, I think you can probably see on the side there, there's windowing going all the way down here, but it doesn't really settle that well. Like I always keep this upright and it never seems to, um, really sort of slide down the sides. So I think I'm up to about here, but I'm not hundred percent sure. Um, so that one, hopefully, um, at least within the first, I don't know, I, I hopefully I can, um, have that one finished at least within the first, um, six months of the project. So the next one I have, oops, sorry about all that background noise. Um, that's just all the things rolling around in the box here, um, is a blush. And so I have, this is a butter blush from Physicians Formula and the shade is called Plum Rose. Um, so I sort of chose this for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, it's not cruelty free. Um, two, it is a fairly sort of, I feel like a fairly everyday wearable shade uh, for me anyway. And three, I actually feel like, and maybe I'll be completely eating my words at the end of the year, but I feel like this won't be too hard to make quite a lot of progress in. And the reason is because I had another shade of this one called, the shade was called Natural Glow, I think, in my deck of panning project last year. And they're really not very pigmented. 
I mean, you can probably see that it's not very pigmented from here anyway. Um, so I have to dip my brush in quite a bit to build up the level of color that I want, I suppose. So for that one, I think in that other project, I had a 20 use goal on it. And I didn't even hit my 20 use goal. I think I, hit, I made about 15 or 16 uses. And I already had worn away a significant amount of the pattern in the center. So even though there is seven and a half grams of product in here, I actually feel like I could potentially make quite a decent dent on this. I was sort of um, sort of tossing up between either that or a blush that I had in um, a project pan last year from Clinique that I think I had used that 50 times in that project. So I've used that a lot more, but I feel like I didn't make as much progress on that. So um, yeah, I guess I'm trying to pick things that um, I can yeah make a decent dent in um, and yet being not cruelty free, I would like to use it up. I mean, obviously Clinique is not cruelty free either, but I don't know, just I'm going for low hanging fruit, I guess. Um, so the next one is a highlighter from Mac. This is apart from, I have, uh, I think one non cruelty free face palette that has highlighter in it. Um, but apart from that, um, this is my only non cruelty free highlighter um, and it's limited edition packaging for Lunar New Year, but it is not a limited edition shade. It is um, double gleam and I'll just show you this um, cool like dragon embossing in the pan there. If it will focus, oops, wrong way. Come on. Um, there we go. Um, so I guess also um, this will be really fun to pan because I think it will be fun to sort of wear away um, that dragon embossing there. Um, so yeah, that is that one. I did mention, I don't know if anyone would remember, um, last year I put in that face palette that had some highlighters and it also has blushes in it as well from NARS because I was thinking of putting that in my project pan as like a pan that face palette type of thing. But I was put off from doing that because the blushes in that palette are so hard pressed and they're so pigmented. Like I do one tiny little dip and then even then have to tap my brush off. Um, so I was just like, you know, this is great value for money, but it's a panner's nightmare probably. Um, so yeah, maybe I will um, pan that um, way down the line when I've used up all my other non cruelty free blushes. Um, so that is highlighter then for bronzer. So I'm not going to, like I said, um, if you watch my finale of last year's project pan, I'm giving the physician's formula bronzer a break. And so I'm going to be using um, a cream bronzer to start um, the year off. This one is from Morphe and it is called uh, their Dimension Effect Contour Stick uh, in Effect 11. But for me, um, I don't like sort of really orangey bronzers. I feel like they don't really suit me. Um, so this color like works quite well. And I think that I don't really have the makeup skill level where I can really <laughs> differentiate between contouring and bronzing anyway. I think they're more or less one in the same for me. Um, and then the last sort of complexion product, I guess I could say I have before I get into lip and eye products is, uh, from Hourglass. So this is the, um, what is it called? There's ambient lighting powder. It's almost rubbed off in dim light. So I had this in my deck of panning last year and you can see I have almost nothing left. So I just thought why not put it in here as a bit of a gimme product. So hopefully if that one's not finished by the first update, um, well, that will probably just mean that I hardly ever wore makeup in the month of January. Um, so yeah, I think I can definitely have that one finished by the, um, next update or the first update, I should say. Um, and that one is actually the only finishing powder I have. So when I use it up, I am actually allowed to purchase a new finishing powder. Although, um, Hourglass actually at the moment in Australia, like all of the ambient lighting powders are out of stock. So I think I'm going to have to look for something else. So if anybody knows of a good dupe for those powders that is cruelty free and preferably is more affordable um, than Hourglass, please do let me know. I do prefer to have it in a pressed powder because I also sometimes take that with me as like uh, to do touch up during the day. Um, particularly with wearing a mask sort of on and off. Sometimes I find the mask, um, yeah, a bit of the foundation transfers onto the mask. And I've actually found that powder was really good for just kind of fixing that up. 
Um, so then for lip products, I have two uh, lip products. Um, one is a, a lip crayon um, type of thing from Revlon, and I did have this in a project pan last year as well and didn't finish it, um, but I have almost nothing left. Um, although I usually do dig stuff out. So um, I think that even what's there, um, I might have it like flush with the, with the tube by the next update, but I don't think I will have finished it. Um, and the shade for that one is called Honey Deuce. Um, and then the next lip product I have, to be honest, I want to use this up. So it's more in this project just to motivate me to use it um, because it's one of these sort of like lip marker things. Um, it's from Max Factor. It is as old as the hills and it just says number six is like the shade number, I guess, but it doesn't have a shade name or if it does, the shade name has just completely rubbed off. Um, but like I get for sort of like panning purposes, this is probably not like it doesn't make that much sense to use this because there's no real tangible way for, to measure progress on this because I think I just use kitchen scales so I'm never going to see a noticeable weight change on this and I also can't track the height of it on a piece of paper so it's more just going in this project to motivate me to use it um, but I will use it until it dries out or starts to smell super weird it's so old but it still smells the same as it did when I first started using it so I'm pretty sure it's still good um, so yeah, I'm just going to use that until it completely dries up. Um, this uh, next product is my brow product, which is also something else that probably belongs in a museum because it's so old. It is just one of those really old school brow pencils from Rimmel. Um, and again, I think the shade is called dark brown, but I'm honestly not sure. I'm not the biggest fan of this. Like this is the, I used to use like pencils like this all the time to do my brows before I really was sort of like super into makeup, but I still wore it every day. Um, and this is the last one I had. And then I was using different products, but I still had this. Um, I do want to try and use it up. It's not cruelty free as well. So it'd be good to get it out of here. Um, I don't know how far down I'll be able to use it to like, obviously I can't use it to the very bottom because yeah, how would I do my brows? I'd have to have like a pair of pliers to hold the pencil or something. Um, so I'll use it until it just really becomes not feasible to use it anymore. But I don't like throwing things out when they still can be used. So just one more item um, and that is a mascara. So I have one from Clinique and it is just a sample of their high impact mascara. I used it for, for the first time today actually and to be honest I didn't find it that impactful but um, we'll see how it goes. I think this is the second last one I have of like non cruelty free mini mascaras. So I'm going to, I'm using all of those first and then I'll move on to full size non cruelty free um, and then yeah obviously trying to get all the non cruelty free stuff out of the way first, but um, I think that will take me up to the end of the year anyway, um, in terms of mascara. So yeah, those are all of the products that I am working on. If you are keen to follow along with my other project pans, make sure you subscribe. I am doing, I don't know how many project pans I'm doing at the moment, probably too many. Um, but yeah, if you would like to follow along, then make sure you subscribe. If you did like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And like I said, if you know of any good dupes for the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder, please do let me know in the comments down below because I'm almost finished that. And at the moment, I cannot replace it from within Australia. Um, so yeah, it would be much appreciated any advice. But um, yeah, that's basically all I have for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll catch you in my next one. Bye.